Hi and welcome to another tech story. Today we're going to take on an interesting project. We're going to create an FTP Linux server. We're going to authenticate this Linux server against Windows Active Directory server. I'm using Windows Server 2016 and we're going to log in to the FTP using AD credential. Uh, for this, I will be using Power Broker Identity Service Linux package. I will be using Ubuntu 20, but I think it will work on Ubuntu 18 even. As I mentioned, I'm using Windows Server 2016. Uh, the communication between, between the Ubuntu server and the Windows Active Directory will be through SSH. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm assuming you already have your Windows, uh, your Windows Active Directory up and running. You have your Linux Ubuntu up and running and both machines can communicate with each other. I'm using VMware Workstation for this, but you can use whatever virtualization software you like, or if you have physical machines, you can use that as well. First thing we will do is we're gonna test that we can reach our Active Directory domain controller. The IP address for this is 10, 10, 11, 218. And yes, let me clear my screen. And yes, I can reach it. The next step we're gonna do, and this is just common practice or, or good common practice, is to always update your system before doing anything. So sudo apt and give it the flag Y to agree to anything. Update, and we're gonna do the same for upgrade also. And there we go. Now let's install SSH. There we go. I have DNS service running on my Active Directory domain controller. So I will point my Linux machine to that DNS server. And the thing is for Ubuntu, or at least the distro I have, the system overwrites whatever DNS server you enter every time it restarts or the network service restarts. So I find the easiest way to fix this is to delete the resolve.con file uh, create a new one, add your name server in there, and just limit access to that file so the system doesn't have access to it. sudo rm etc resolve to delete that file, then sudo nano etc resolve.conf to create that file and open it with nano text editor. And I'm gonna write name server 10 10 11 218. I'm going to save this and sudo shatter and I'm going to give it the i flag to limit access etc resolve now here if we try to delete it again we should get a message saying we don't have access to that file and there we go and that worked nicely now what we need to do is open our hosts file in a text editor i'm choosing nano but if you want to choose v instead go ahead and do that there we go i'm gonna change this to my current ip address that i have for this linux machine so that would be 10 10 10 181 and my linux machine name is ftp server I'm going to leave this as it is, and I'm going to write ftp-server to give it the fully qualified domain name dot textory dot local. Textory dot local is the domain name I'm using on my Windows Active Directory. And I'm going to save and exit. Clear my screen. The next thing we'll do is to install a Power Broker Identity Service. Unfortunately, you can't install that directory from the Ubuntu repository. Uh, so I'm going to install that from the, from the GitHub repository. I'm using 64-bit Linux system. So I'm going to copy the link to this file. And I'm going to leave the link in the description for the GitHub repository. And here, I'm going to write wget to download the file. And paste the link. Hit enter. And that should start download at any minute now. There we go. Clear. 
Now, in order to execute this file, we're going to need to add an execute flag to the file itself. So, to do so, I'm going to write sudo commode plus x to add the execute flag and then the name of the file. Enter. And then let's execute the file and install the package uh, dot slash and the name of the file. Hit enter. And that will execute the file. Great. Now let us try to join the domain. sudo domain join the CLI join text story dot local and username administ administrator at text story dot local password is the password I have and if all went well you should get a success message so to double check that you have joined the domain let's do a query request to that domain domain join cli and then just write query and you should get information about this domain name and there we go now we have we have successfully joined the domain now we need to automatically create a home folder for each user that will log in and in order to do this i will use pam so write sudo pam dash auth dash update and just navigate to create home directory and login hit ok now one thing we need to do is to edit the greeter screen to be able to log in with our users to do this we're going to need to add this line to the configuration of the light dm so we're going to navigate to user share light dm IDM conf. We're gonna add this line in the 50 Ubuntu conf and add another file 50 unity greeter.conf. So sudo nano 50 unity greeter.conf and that's right, C default, close the brackets, and let's paste that line. And I'm gonna save this. Now I'm gonna write the same line in the Ubuntu file, just in case. There we go, and sudo and reboot. Now let's check our Our Windows Active Directory and as we can see in Active Directory users and computers under computers we can see our FTP server there let's try to log in I'm gonna click on not listed then I'm gonna write administrator at tech story dot local hit enter then write my password and hit enter and there we go we were able to log in with our active directory credentials okay let's open our terminal let's write who am i to see who's logged in and as you can see it's the administrator user of course we don't we currently don't have any if we do um any administrator privileges on this to do sudo update We can see we don't have sudo privileges. So I'm going to log in with the normal user now or the default administrator. There we are. Now let's add the Active Directory administrator to the list of administrators in the system. In order to do this, I'm just going to write sudo v sudo and hit enter and that should open the sudoer file there we go now let's add our user tech story backslash backslash administrator and i'm gonna give it all privileges 
There we go. Now let's test this. So, uh, administrator text story dot local. Now let's test this. Let's write sudo app y update. Here is my password again. And there we go. So now this user is administrator. Let's try another user even. I have a user named Ubuntu. Yeah. At textstory.local. Here is my password. And there we go. So the first part is done now. We can now log in using our Active Directory credentials with no problem. Now, now we go to the second part, which is installing VS FTPD for creating the FTP server, changing the settings, and then finally testing our FTP server using our Active Directory credentials. So let's get started with that. First thing we need to do is, of course, install VSFTPD. Great. Now let's edit the settings. Well, actually, before we edit the FTP server configuration, let us create a self signed certificate that we will be using later to connect to our FTP server with SSL or TLS in this case. So I'm going to use OpenSSL. If you don't have that already installed, go with sudo apt y install OpenSSL. Usually it comes with, uh, with Ubuntu, but in case you don't, you can install it manually. After that, I have chosen RSA encryption with 2048 bits, and the location will be exported here and here. Copy this. And I'm gonna paste it here. It's not pasting weird. So paste. There we go. I'm just gonna leave it as the default, but feel free to enter whatever information you want full name, state, all that good stuff. And here we have our certificate and key generated. Take note where you have saved those files because you were gonna use them in the vsftpd configuration now let's edit the configuration i'm going to use my nano text editor vsftpd.conf now i do not want to allow anonymous uh, access local yes write enable yes i want the user to be able to write let's see what else i want to ch root the user to their home directory so they can't navigate out of that so let's find ch root there we go ch root local user yes and for this to work we need to add another command allow allow writable ch root let me paste this there we go now that this is done, let's now add the location for my certificate file and private key in, in the configuration. So we'll go here, we're going to enable SSL. Let's remove the default. All right. And let's paste this information. And save this. Let's restart the service because without restart, it will not work or the changes will not take effect anyway. So service vsftpd restart, and there we go. Now I'm using FileZilla to test this, but feel free to use whatever FTP client you want. So there we go. Here is my site manager, and here is my administrator at techstory.local. And here I'm gonna use this account, and I'm gonna require FTP over TLS and click connect and you should get a prompt asking you if you trust this certificate and because it's it's self-signed I'm gonna always trust this hit OK and as you can see I'm logged in into my home folder and I cannot 
navigate out of it which what we wanted from the ch root so that is great i'm gonna i'm gonna test upload this folder ftp test from my computer and as you can see here is the folder and here is the text file side so this was a successful project now let's test with another account just to make sure that it's working fine and we have the ubuntu account also ubuntu and there we go and it's working fantastically upload and there we go and so as we can see it works fine the only thing or the only issue with this so far is that the user would have to log into the system in order for the home directory to be created for that user so without logging to the system with that user credentials there will be no home directory and thus you won't be able to log in through ftp for that user i'm working on fixing this with uh, with a bash script as soon as i do i will upload another video to add this fix well that's it for today uh, i hope you enjoyed this and if you did please leave a like subscribe and share and i'll see you in the next video